show thank you everybody for calling me and giving the feedback that I go out of my way to bring the most incredible candidates sitting or guests sitting in here and talk about real issues and that is the whole idea of Camilla Singh show it's a community show if you have anything to talk about this is the place for you to be sitting here and talking about it and as you want all wanted and we all have seen in the media and I think under the pandemic or lockdown, we have experienced that um, under the lockdown or even it was happening before, we have to talk, think about our safety and our children's safety. Uh, do you feel safe? Uh, do you feel your children are safe? Do you think there's a lot of mental health issues going on with that because the kids cannot go out and socialize with their friends or play basketball, soccer and all that? might start opening up soon, but what has that impacted, how, how that has impacted you and your children? And with us here to talk about exactly that, on my very left is Karen Reed Sidhu. She is the Executive Director of Surrey Crime Prevention Society. And next to her is, you have known him in the community, you have seen him in the community, he's no stranger to the community, he's Jack Kosher. And as a parent, <laughs> I always follow him and watch him. He will be talking about parenting. So here we are to talk about safety, parenting, everything that you can think under the sun. Welcome to both of you. Thank you very much for having me today. Thank you. It's very nice to balance both of you because you sort of work together and not work together. But I think mostly your thoughts are together and you work together. So Karen, talk a little bit about who you are and talk about your organization. So, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, 10 years ago, I started with Surrey Crime Prevention. We have been around since 1984. We currently have just over 460 volunteers. Mm -hmm. Majority of them are under the age of 30 years old, so we're engaging youth in our community to get involved. What we do is we support community safety programs throughout the city of Surrey. Mm -hmm. We have uh, youth who are going out on community safety tours in six areas within the city, as well as our uh, Citizens Community Safety Watch, who go out from 9 till 2 a.m. And also we have our traffic safety team. Our branding is very obvious. If you see our youth out there in green jackets, they're out there. We call them the green team. Mm -hmm. They're doing amazing work. In the past six years, they contributed over 165,000 hours to the city of Surrey which is a pretty remarkable number. So I would say that um, when you talk about engaging youth, we definitely have opportunities for youth to be engaged in their community. So we ask all the parents that are, who are listening today, if you want to get involved, please visit our website, preventcrime.ca, because we have many opportunities. When you look at what's going on in the Lower Mainland, specifically now because of the pandemic, kids are really isolated. So it's never been more important to get them involved in their community and engaging them. We also have a program for vulnerable youth, and we team them up with mentors, university students who have been trained to be mentors for youth who are from the ages of 12 to 18. Mm -hmm. This program is a remarkable program, and we have seen tremendous success. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit about us. Okay. I have another question, but I'll wait. And the next to her is Jack Kosher. And like I say, he's very well known in the community, has done many volunteer work and all that. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that, but most focus, I want to talk to him about parenting. We sometimes don't spend as much time we should with the kids. And, uh, and I know he's a great father, two teenage boys. I follow him on social media and the dogs as well. <laughs> so we're not gonna talk about dogs, but about parenting. Because whatever he does in the community, but end of the day, I think it's so, so important to be going home and spending time with your children. And we don't expect to do that when they are teenagers and grown up. That has to start 
you take over then, sir. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Camila, for having us here. And, you know, honestly, I'm a big fan of uh, Karen's work and her team. Okay. That At least <laughs> when I'm on, on the road driving around. And it's, it's no surprise, I see your volunteers at least three or four times around. And, and as you say, you know, green team or That's green, nice to hear. green volunteers, like every single time. Uh, there hasn't been a day when I drive around the city and I don't see uh, kids in green jackets uh, doing the volunteer work. So thank you for, for doing that for our community. Well, thank you for what you do as well. So as soon as my kids are at a certain age, when they can join, they'll be joining her team for sure. Uh, you know, you, you, and again, a lot of uh, good things you said, and I think every parent should do that. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I put myself on social media is not to show, but mainly lead by example. Yes. If I'm doing something with my kids, maybe somebody else will, uh, else will get in, inspired by that. And it was, uh, hey, I went to a cell phone repair shop one day. Uh, I don't know this person, but he goes, hey, Jack, thanks for doing what you do uh, in the community and for your kids. And I'm like, oh, thanks. And he goes, oh, no, I follow you on social media. And I used to work seven days a week at my business, but now, looking at you, I've started to do mm -hmm. those activities with my kids. And that's all it takes. It's every single person's responsibility to share what we have, mm -hmm. our failures, our successes, and that's what I do, try to do with my kids, you know, to spend as much time as I can, and especially pandemic didn't help. Mm -hmm. Like you said, they were isolated, and uh, they, they were feeling, they, they weren't able to do the stuff that they would normally do with their friends. Mm -hmm. And, and unfortunately, now parenting has changed a lot too. Mm -hmm. We're not just parents, we're their friends, we're the yes. guide, we're teachers, we're mentors. So huge responsibility on parents as well. So uh, it's all about helping each other and supporting, that's what I do. I was gonna ask you then, uh, I mean, I know your kids are a little bit older now, but uh, how is the discipline come in there? I mean, were you more, a little bit more disciplined when they were a little younger? And now as they grow up a little bit, you have to be able to be a friend, then a discipliner. How does, does is there any? It's a fine balance, right? You, yeah. you have to have house rules. You yes. have to have ground rules for the kids. But what does that entail? How do you implement that discipline? Does it have to be like, you know, taking away their games or forcefully making them do things? No, I think understanding goes long ways. And if you can make them understand where you're coming from and respecting them. Mm -hmm. That's a huge deal for me. Like, if you disrespect a kid, you're talking down on them just because you're a parent and you can tell them what to do, mm -hmm. it doesn't go too far. Okay. They'll listen to you when they're young. But you know, kids grow very fast. Maybe a 14 year old is taller than me right now. So mm -hmm. how can I make him do things at this point? It's the self-respect thing, yeah, right? Yeah. He respects me, I respect him. He knows where his dad's coming from. And that's what, you know, makes things work out. Right, so there is a lot of communication need to happen. Mm -hmm. Because it's not like what I'm thinking or is his <coughs> tent to take the garbage out or recycling or put the garbage on the street or whatever, the chores that this has been already, you don't do it when they are older, you do it when they are younger. Mm -hmm. Just train them that, okay, it's Wednesday, it's a garbage day. Or did I put the garbage out or I'm getting late for school, right? So that responsibility. Building habits, right? Building yeah. habits and showing them the value in doing it. Mm -hmm. Like what's in it for them? Yes. Like why should they do it? Yes. Every kid, in a, and we also have to understand they're still kids, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. So sometimes as adults, like, well, you need to do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but they want to play. So you got to keep that fine balance, reward, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit give and take in there. Mm -hmm. I think what I think one of the things that uh, we really emphasize with our organization is civic pride, taking accountability and understanding what that means. Civic mm -hmm. pride is being proud of where you live, being proud of what you do and seeing the value of what you do in a community. And that pride is so rewarding. We have, right now in the city of Surrey, there's a program called Love Where You Live. Mm -hmm. So I live in a townhouse complex with almost 200 units. And I have just recently signed up to do Love Where You Live and I've engaged 16 of the youth in our complex, the young kids who are ranging from the age of seven mm -hmm. to 12. And I have masks, gloves, PB, all the um, mm -hmm. hand sanitizer, but we have pickers and t-shirts and vests. So the kids are gonna go around and clean up. We also have that as part of our program now with Surrey Crime Prevention. Mm -hmm. So we have Love Where You Live. They go out once a week. Every team goes out once a week and they're doing that. 
people are noticing. And when you have your children engaged in activities that is a family activity, when our kids were growing up, my kids are adults now, but when our kids were growing up, we knew who their friends were. Uh -huh. We knew where they were. We knew what they were up to. We made sure that they had responsibilities in the house. And until they did their responsibilities, there was no opportunity to do fun things because uh -huh. you have to have... Uh, give kids a sense of structure mm -hmm. and I do believe that uh, nowadays we seem to have lost that in many families where there's no structure because their parents are so busy with their jobs and other activities in the community we need to take a step back mm -hmm. we have children we want to guide them provide them with structure and give them the best opportunity to be the best adult that they can be and I think that many families now are struggling because of the pandemic about giving the kids the opportunity to get engaged in the community. Well, I'll give you one example. We have a program called Community Enhancement where we remove, remove graffiti off of different properties in the city. And we had a young offender who was given community service hours uh -huh. to the courts, came to us. He removed all the graffiti off of a whole strip along King George Highway off the hydro poles. The next week he went back and it was all tagged again by taggers for graffiti. He was so frustrated. He said, all my work is down the toilet, basically. <laughs> and I said, but you know what you learned from that mm -hmm. is you gave back. Yes. Now you're going to go back and clean it again. And eventually they'll get the message that they can't tag here. Mm -hmm. He said that was so rewarding for me, but it was so frustrating for him. So, yeah, that's one example. So with the uh, city crime prevention, is it the kid has to live in Surrey to be able to join? No. Okay. We have, uh, right now, in our vulnerable, our program for vulnerable youth, we have youth coming all the way from Abbotsford. We uh, take youth from the ages of 12 to 18 for that program. Uh, we have students, young people, who are joining us at the age of 16. They have to be 16 to be a volunteer. Okay. We also have a high school work experience program because part of the curriculum, they have to have volunteer work experience hours to be able to graduate. Uh -huh. So we have a very... Uh, detailed program about that. We have Delta, Langley, Surrey, Richmond, Coquitlam uh, students sent to us to participate in that program. And we get such amazing feedback from the teachers. It's very structured. They get training. They learn valuable skills. So th there's so many different opportunities to have your youth get involved in our organization. And all our programs are listed on our website. That's good. And just like what Jack said, I also see all these people in the green jacket where they put big, huge parking lot and all that, and mm. they're picking garbage or whatever. You. And I thought, I know that they are from your team. So it just makes me so pr proud that we always hear so much negative in the community. But look at these kids. They are volunteers, and they're giving back yeah. to the community. It's a pride that we all should be, and we all should be teaching our children that it's not about them, right. but what it means. And we represent the diversity of the city of Surrey with over 90% of our volunteers being from diverse uh, communities within the city of Surrey and outside of the city of Surrey. Our senior executive team are all women, mm -hmm. two of them South Asian. Uh, we have an amazing group of uh, our board members. We have amazing board members, our interim President right now, Manny Deal Fallon, is a South Asian woman. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a woman on our board who is a senior federal crown. So we have a diverse really team, diverse, yeah. and it's and it, we're very proud of the diversity that exists on our organization. Yeah. In addition to that, we are work collaboratively with CFSCU. Mm -hmm. We work collaboratively with the RCMP mm -hmm. and Delta Police. We work with Transit Police. We work with the City of Surrey, the BIAs, all these different organizations out there, ICBC. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just very um, collaborative in our approach to ensuring that we all have our goals, are collaborative, and we work together to try and achieve success with our goals. So, yeah. Thank you. Jack, there are a lot of parents that I talk to, and I see them. And uh, they thought that um, they have lost this battle of maintaining or disciplining or people that are on, on the social media all the time, 
locking up in the room, not coming out, just eating, going to school and all that. And there is no communication happening because they are either busy when the parents approach them and they have not started this communication from young age, I guess, they were busy. If they're a little bit older, what can we do or what can they do to be able to connect, have a heart-to-heart -heart talk without get distracted by television or the cell phones and this TikTok or what have you, that they are able to be able to talk to each other? First thing you got to realize it's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. If it took 70, 17, <laughs> 18 years to build that prison around you, it's going to take just as long or maybe longer uh, to break those bricks away now. Right? So what parents don't realize is they, they were absent in their kids' life yes. when they were younger. Mm -hmm. And a lot of kids will say, hey, man, you weren't there for me when I needed you. Now I'm busy in my life. So having realistic expectations is the first step. It's not going to happen that you go talk to your kid and say, hey, let's talk now, and the kid will be, okay, fine, I'll put my phone away, it's going to happen. No. But there are things you can do. Once the pandemic is over, you're able to travel, maybe travel with your kids as much as you can. And it doesn't have to be to Europe or wherever. BC is a beautiful it's place, so you can go anywhere, camping. Yeah. Uh -huh. And everybody puts their phones away. Yeah. We as parents are also guilty. I see myself doing that. I catch myself doing that. I'm yeah. on my phone sometimes, right? Undivided attention is what will draw them back in. They enjoy activities with, with the parents. Nobody wants to sit and talk, to be very honest, right? Like, yeah. they are at a different wavelength. They yeah. are with their friends now. They want to play video games. So you've got to make it attractive for them to come back to you. One, th one way to do it is go as a family, do a painting night or camping or sports or do something, and slowly you can reel yeah. them back in. It may mm -hmm. not be 100%. But you can start there. That's a good start. Gardening together. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids, like who, none of the kids I see have house chores to do. Mm -hmm. Like Karen mentioned before, she talks about the civic responsibility and love where you live campaign. So two years ago, my kid goes, hey, our street's very dirty. And I'm like, yeah, it is. But what are you doing about it? <laughs> Putting it back on them sometimes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's exactly. like, what can I do? Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, go door to door. Yeah. Uh, you know, print out a flyer, yeah. and let's see people will come and help you. Yeah. He goes, nobody's going to come help. I'm like, okay, you guys lead. So I got two or three kids together. Right. Like, we'll stay in the background. We'll go to each door, and let's see what happens. You'll be surprised. 32 people showed up wow. in the neighborhood. See? And we cleaned that six-block radius. And once they cleaned it, it stayed clean. The back alley, you know, people started to see, well, somebody else is coming in cleaning it for My me, garbage, yeah. it's a sense of responsibility, yeah, that you, right. responsibility you throw on them too, right? Yeah. So I, I actually walked and I showed my kid, this is how the change happens. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the graffiti will come back, but you do it again. It's over repetitive, right? Like mm -hmm. you have to build habits in your neighborhood too and show other people there's value exactly. in keeping your neighborhoods clean. Because one way to keep crime out, and that's her fundamental thing mm -hmm. that she do, it does, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, keep your neighborhoods clean. It's very uncomfortable for the criminals to come in when they know that somebody's taking care of the area. Yeah. Unkept areas will attract all kinds of problems. So having those kids to do those activities and joining them in that. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, you do that. No, yeah. no, no. Start doing it. Engage yeah. them in it. That's what I do. And let us do it together. Yeah. And it's not the city's responsibility to clean up after us. We have a responsibility to maintain our communities. We have a program where we go out and we report on illegal dumping. Mm -hmm. So every everybody listening to this today can download the app for My Surrey. And if they see something in their, in their community, they can report it through the app and it's, the city will come and clean it up. But again, it's you're so right, Jag. It, it's a responsibility. Let's all get involved. We all can make a, a difference by going out and cleaning up our neighborhoods. And I'll tell you, it makes such a difference when you see a clean area when you see that graffiti is gone. Mm. Uh, the value, the programs are so valuable that I was able to get Shaw, Telus, and BC Hydro to give us funding to mm -hmm. run this program because yeah. we're a charity, so we yeah. rely on funding from various sources. But it's really exciting to be able to see how much of an impact our volunteers are having on the community, and it doesn't go unnoticed. Mm -hmm. Everybody is re recognizing that, and. I agree, Jay. Getting your kids involved. I mean, our kids were always out there picking up. And when I see people dumping mattresses I know, and I couches, that. it just drives me nuts. Like, you can call the city. They have they six free pickups a year. And you can call them. Instead of dumping it and making it somebody else's problem, why don't you keep it as your problem? Call the city and they come and pick it up. 
You know, I don't understand that part because I don't live in Surrey, but I do drive. I do all my business. And every time I see either a cow is there or a mattress there yeah. or what have you, and I sit. And I work in Surrey, but I also know that they will be picking up the couches or whatever I have to make arrangements with them. Free just leave it. Yeah, leave it outside and they'll pick it up. But you why? just have to phone them. Yeah, so. Yeah. Oh. Sometimes it's an awareness issue too. It's awareness, you, you, right. You've got to teach people that there are ways to do this, you know, in a simpler fashion. You don't have to throw it on the side of the street. So awareness piece, I think that's where your channel comes in, in play too. You can make people aware. What are the implications of leaving the garbage in front of your house? Mm -hmm. It's going to attract criminals. Yeah. How can you get rid of it for free? Yes. This is the way to do it. And that slowly people will start to get into it. And what example does that set for your kids if you don't take responsibility? You're yeah. setting a bad example. But also, when you think about uh, getting your community, get your getting your kids involved. My husband goes to the gym with our daughter. Uh -huh. uh, we used to go hiking. We used to go to the park and kick the soccer ball around. We used to go camping together when they were younger. Those are the memories. You're creating memories. Memories are so important. When your adult children look back at their childhood, you are now, you have now set an example for them when they have children. Yes. And it continues that education piece. It's so important to be able to create memories with your kids so they can take that example and that experience and pass it on to their kids. And that's what they will remember. Yeah. Oh, I did that. I used to go hiking with mm -hmm. my dad in this way. Mm -hmm. And that's all. That's the only memory. It's priceless. It is. Right? It is priceless. Yeah. So I think it's so, so important. Whatever time we have. And I think with parents, grandparents, we have to make time. Nobody has time. Everybody is busy here. We are involved in work. We have to work to bring the food on the table, pay the bills and everything. At the same time, provide for children. But at the same time, those are uh, jobs or responsibilities a parent we do, but at the same time, take some time away or take out to make sure this will be my time with my children. No phone, no nothing. So I re setting your priorities, yeah. right? Like yeah. when you say we have to work, what are we working for? Mm -hmm. We're working for family, for making, you know, we make a decent living house. We want our kids to have education. But what's the point if we lose our kids in that process? Yeah. You build a fancy house, got a great car, but you lost your kids. Mm -hmm. So set your priorities right, and that's where you can divvy up your time accordingly. I remember my husband telling me a story about when he was growing up. Obviously, my husband's South Asian, and mm -hmm. his father came from India when he, in 1955, I believe. Uh, I remember when he was growing up, he was telling me about the fact that if he wanted a new pair of Adidas, he would have to go pick strawberries in mm -hmm. the field. And he hated it, but he did it because... There was a, a reward at the end of it, and it, it was also supporting the family. Mm -hmm. They worked in various jobs when they were growing up in high school, and that money went to support the family. And we have lost that connection of why are we working. Yeah. We are working to make sure our family is fed, right. that yeah. we have a roof over our head, that we have education for our children. It's not about the latest car. It's not about the biggest wedding. It's not about having the best watch or the best rings. It's about value of family. Mm -hmm. And that's what is missing, I think, in, not, in every community. I think that we've all got caught up in the materialistic part of society, and I think that's really unfortunate. Under this lockdown, there is no big weddings, nothing. I think it's uh, maybe starting to open up a little bit. But I think in our community, if I feel that we compete. If you're going to have one house, I'm going to work three jobs to have two homes, one to rent as income and one to live in and all that. So I think we need to get rid of that. We all say we came to this country for our children. We had everything back home, either from Fiji, India, or whatever. But we just chose to leave everything to come to this country for our children. Are we really? came to the country for the kids. And if we are, then we all have to work, but don't have to have one, two, three properties, just have to live a simple life. I think that uh, one of the most amazing values I've learned from being part of the South Asian community through marriage, my father-in-law was the most amazing human being. He passed away recently, but he, he was amazing and he, he had he was priceless he had more he had more wealth in his heart yeah. than all the money in the world and he taught all of his kids values and 
taught them the importance of being part of the community and that's so important that we continue with those values. I know, Jaggy, your values are so strong with your kids and your family and I just see it every Try day when I see them on social media, yeah, gardening and, and going out and doing sports and you were doing all these different activities with your boys and your and your family, your wife and your aunt, your dog. Uh -huh. And it's just, um, but that's what it's about. Enjoy right? the nature and as well. simple things. They I don't know. cost anything. And like you said, my when he was eight, he goes, I'll do all these things with my kids when I grow up. Yeah. And that's the real legacy oh, wow. piece, right? Like see? you, or the kids will say, I'm never going to do this to my kids, what you do to me. Yeah. So you would choose which kind which of parent, you, parent want to be. you want to be. What do you want your kids to take away from you? So lead by example is what I'll say. We'll all make mistakes. I'm not perfect. 100% mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not. I make mistakes all the time. But it's learning from these mistakes, right? And telling your kids that failure is okay, right? But teach them. Yeah. Lead them. I'm looking at the clock. Last closing remarks. I really encourage all the parents listening today if you have young people living at home and they are feeling vulnerable, whether through isolation or being bullied at school, if they just want to be part of something positive, I encourage them to get involved by contacting our organization. We are growing so much and we have so much to offer. And these volunteer hours are critical I know. for their post-secondary education. It's critical for their future careers because they have to have volunteer experience. So we encourage you to visit our website, preventcrime.ca, and they can apply online. And if you want more information, call our office, 604-502-8555. All I have to say is spend time with your kids, quality time. Right. And engage them in these volunteer activities. Do a scan around your city and say what's suitable for your kids, what the interests are. And Surrey Crime Prevention is a, is a great example. It's there uh -huh. if you want your kids to join and uh, do some you know things that they can be proud of. Later By on. all means, you know, get out there and do it. Thank you so much to both of you, you for spending your time and valuable time and information to our viewers. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Camilla. Camilla.